G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear. You'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes. You'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture. You'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyze historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might want to consider subscribing. In today's video, we're going to look at how to make an archery brace just like this. Archery braces, uh, I believe, are a very necessary part of archery. I actually teach archery and uh, I, I am quite passionate about archery and historical archery. During my research for this video, I've come across some iconography and some carvings which show archery braces just like this being used uh, throughout the Dark Ages and before by the Romans. And also in this case uh, by what we think of the Normans on the Bayou Tapestry. We can't see them very clearly, but uh, I think something like this would have been absolutely essential to wear on top of a male garment, as in chain mail. Um, otherwise the bowstring would wear against the metal and potentially deteriorate or even break. So we have iconography of, of something like this and it, it does, something like this makes a whole lot of sense to me. I'm unaware of any actual archaeological finds for an archery brazier as such, although we do have archaeological finds for uh, a leather quiver. Okay, now uh, let's have a little bit of a look. I'm just using a very simple archery bracer, something like this during the Dark Ages. And I, my focus is Western Europe, obviously. We've got finds throughout uh, parts of Egypt. King Tutankhamun springs to mind as an example. However, in, in Western Europe, I'm unaware of any actual archeological finds for something like this as such. Okay, so... Um, this is a really good project to do, a really fun project, can save yourself a bucket load of money and I think um, we should give it a go. Let's take a look. Uh, in this video I wanted to make uh, an archery bracer, a dark age style archery bracer. My experience with archery is that you need an archery bracer, if you don't, a medium to heavyweight bow can fairly easily remove things like uh, skin and freckles and hair. So. I like to go for a fairly thick archery bracer. I, I don't often believe that I need it. I don't often hear it being used, but well, there we go. Alrighty, so uh, I wanted to go with a lace-up design and I wanted to go with one, as I say, which is reasonably thick. This is um, three millimeter thick leather, uh, vegetable tanned leather, and it is uh, approximately seven to eight ounce for those of you who are watching from Canada and or America. Uh, already so what we're going to do is we'll just get this cut out uh, I like to use uh, this sort of knife uh, I like to use a, a fresh blade on every single one of my projects uh, I just tend to find that's the way that I prefer to work um, I like a nice sharp blade alrighty so let's get cutting Right, so the next thing we're going to do uh, is we're just going to use what they call an edge beveler and we're just going to take down the edge. This just gives you a really nice finish. This is just one of those kind of one percent of things that really does bring out your uh, your projects.
and it really sort of smooths off and it's one of those things I think that um, really sort of demonstrates people who have a bit of care and passion for their work. You might want to do it on both sides. Um, you know, I, I have made archery braces previously, which have um, a second layer to them. So you can use a thinner leather, maybe just like a one and a half millimeter leather or something on the other side. And you can glue that just with a simple PVA glue. Um, I'm not going to on this occasion. I, I don't think that's overly necessary. Uh, it, it does depend a lot on your technique and um, there are historical examples of both but they're found in the sort of renaissance period and the Tudor period and that kind of thing so uh, I don't think it's necessary for today. The next thing I'm going to do is, is burnish the edges. So by burnishing what I'm referring to is we now have a, um, a pretty reasonable surface here, but I want to make it look a lot better. So I like to rub some beeswax down the side. And then I use a, a burnishing tool. Now you can get motorized burnishing tools. Uh, I believe Tandy sells them, for instance. Uh, I personally don't think they're necessary for me at this stage. Um, I'm probably more of a novice than anything um, and I'm okay with that. We're all learning. I don't think anyone's really a true expert in anything. I think if you're truly honest with yourself, yeah, we're all learning. Anyway, um, this just gives you a really nice finish on the sides. It really brings it up, brings it um, a bit of extra detail and as I say, really sort of pushes out your pride in your work and I think that's really important. This can take a few minutes so um, just allow yourself a bit of time. Now in terms of measurements for all the project like this um, it's going to depend a lot on you. Uh, not only are we talking about the circumference of the, the wrist and lower in down into the um, towards the elbow but Uh, you're talking about the length. Now, uh, some archery clubs really prefer you to have a longer length um, archery bracer, some don't. So it really does depend on you and your technique. Uh, I think it also is going to depend a bit on the bow that you're, the type of bow that you're, you're using. And when we're talking about um, the historical evidence for uh, archery gear, we know archery goes back many, many thousands of years longbows are thought to go back possibly as far as I guess um, 30,000 years I've, I've heard mentioned by some historians um, I'm not sure exactly what sources they've used for that archery braces and these sorts of pieces of kit have been found in, in um, grave finds uh, in the Middle East and uh, that kind of area particularly King Tutankhamun is one that springs to mind but I'm not aware of any finds in, in Western Europe for the Dark Ages. Alright guys, so that's burnishing done. Now tooling for a, um, a bracer such as this, there's a couple of things you probably want to bear in mind. Um, a lot of people like to put uh, a big motif across the middle. Uh, I don't always think that works too well because if the string is going to strike the bracer then it will rub off eventually um, the, the detailing work that you've done. So I tend to think that um, leaving this area clear and putting a bit of detail on the sides is, is probably the preferred way to go. That's for me anyway. And there are examples found on the Mary Rose that tend to demonstrate uh, that that was fairly uh, consistent with other people too. So let's start to think a bit about tooling. Alrighty, so let's do some basic uh, leather carving. So I don't want to put too much 
detail down the middle of my bracer and the reason for that is going to be that I want the, um, the bracer clear. If a bowstring does catch the bracer then the, the string could damage and potentially break um, depending on the poundage of the bow and how it's being used and also um, as the strings do strike the bracer eventually the detail will wear off so there's not a lot of point putting much detail down the middle because it's, it's really not going to last Rightio, so when we're tooling leather um, I'm just going to do a very basic Celtic weave here and then I'll uh, just add a few other details as we go I use a stylus which is basically a, a blunt sort of needle I guess and that just leaves an impression on the leather you do need to have the leather relatively damp but not wet if that makes much sense and just be a little careful of your over and unders when you're doing your Celtic weaves Fortunately today is not particularly humid or hot so I'm able to work relatively consistently. I live in Brisbane, Australia so I tend to find that um, I have to keep wetting the leather down to, uh, to keep it consistent and then I tend to find that means the detailing doesn't always come out as well as I would like alrighty now I'll do the same on the other side you should be able to see the leather absorbing the moisture there fairly readily as it's a fairly thick bracer I just want to make sure that's not wet as I said but Damn. Okay, perfect. And just line it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a, um, a swivel knife just to uh, create a bit more of an impression in, in the tooling that we've done. As I said, I'm not uh, any kind of like massive expert in this. Um, some people do it way better than I do. And occasionally you may want to just apply a bit more moisture just to uh, to keep your work consistent. So that's the basics of tooling and carving leather. Now we're just going to um, do a little bit more with some stamping. Now you can buy a whole range of different punches and obviously it depends on how much you want to do as to uh, what kind of work you want to you know, achieve. These tools don't tend to cost that much money. Um, you can buy them off various sites like Amazon, eBay and so on. And um, you will get different types of quality depending on, on you know, where you get them from. However, um, Um, but the effect can be quite impressive. I'm going to use some hollow rivets now to uh, secure the bracer to my arm. As you can see in the iconography, uh, these would have been worn over armour most likely or um, if the user was not wearing armour, as is probably most common, then um, they simply would have been worn on top of a padded jacket or just on top of the tunic depending on the situation the 
the first thing we've got to do is just make some holes through the leather. To my knowledge, there's no finds of archery braces during the, the Dark Ages. That said, we do know of them through iconography. So uh, we, we simply don't know how they were tied onto the garments uh, or secured to the garments. So my, and, and a lot of reenactors simply use a, a system like this. It's just preferable to them and that's okay. Uh, so when we're using a, a hollow rivet such as this, I prefer to preset the holes like I've just done. You then use a die and cast like this, which you usually get in a set with the, re, uh, the washer going on the bottom. That then goes through the leather. The top of the rivet goes in like so. What I then do is put the dying on top and just slowly tuck that through the lever. Once I'm satisfied I've got it roughly in position. Then I'll give it a, a bit more force. Right, there we go, nice flush rivet. It's important to make sure, obviously, you're going to get one that's going to suit the, um, the application. In other words, make sure it's thick enough for the leather that you're trying to get through. Okay, so when it comes to dyeing leather, there's a few fairly important tips to follow. Okay, the first thing I like to try and do is I like to wet the leather down because it's going to give you a nice, consistent, even finish. So, there we go. Rightio. Um, I'm going to use a MAC Lace Dark Brown dye. So what I want to try and avoid and it's not always possible, but I'm trying to avoid too much of the streaking that you sometimes get. Now, I like to wear gloves as well, just keeps the dye off your fingers. That's no big deal, because it will wash out, but sometimes it can take a day or two uh, and that can look a little bit weird. What I'm now going to do is just use a paintbrush just to get in some of the finer areas. You can apply multiple coats of dye. Just depends on the effect you're looking to get and also I guess the brand and the color that you're using. But it really doesn't take that long um, and especially when you've done the tooling, it really does make your project really stand out, I think. You can use um, some, not necessarily all, um, acrylic, that is water-based paints, um, but it's 
best to be fairly selective about what you use. I usually let that dry for a little while. Now I'm just going to add a product called Antique. This is uh, Philbing's Medium Brown Antique Finish. It actually comes up quite dark and it is really good at like lifting out and popping out the detail that you've put into your work. It comes out with a consistency like uh, what Australians might refer to as Vegemite or the English might refer to as Marmite. Um, and there we go. All right, so again, I use gloves and a, just a cloth and then just rub that in. Use a fair bit, but don't go crazy with it. And I'll just let that sit for a few seconds or not too long. And then I'll just go over and wipe the remainder off. Lastly, I use a clear sealer. Now this will um, help protect your leather work from UV light, water, that kind of stuff, bit of rain, no big deal. And there we go. That is now complete. Alrighty guys, um, thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. And I'll catch you in my next video.